Despite the barbaric acts of ISIS, there is still hope for those living in the world of Islam. Recently, our Chris Mitchell met with Christians in Kurdistan who shared amazing stories of supernatural encounters with Jesus happening throughout the Middle East. As ISIS conquered parts of northern Iraq and persecuted Christian minorities, as Iran continues to suppress religious freedom, a surprising result happened. The gospel actually began to spread. So besides the darkness uh, coming, coming in and trying to get the light and salt out, killing lives and bringing so much pain and suffering, on the other hand, we're seeing the rise of the presence of God, worship, prayer, people experiencing Jesus, and people open up to the gospel and coming to know Him and follow Him, even from Muslim background. Fabian leads a house of prayer in Kurdistan. He told us of meeting people who had supernatural encounters with Jesus. People in these streets and in these refugee camps from places where ISIS have occupied, even people from here, that are encountering Jesus in, in, in dreams and visions. Those divine encounters are not limited to ISIS-controlled areas. It's a phenomenon happening throughout the Middle East. CBN News met with some visiting Iranians to Kurdistan who wanted to share their stories. We've concealed their identities for their own protection. One night when I was in bed, I had a dream, and the light was speaking as I'm speaking to you now. It was calling my name verbally and saying, come to me, I will save you and I will rescue you. But I didn't understand. That decision soon followed for Abby and her mother. About seven months ago, we made our own decision to follow Jesus with all our hearts. When we came here, they explained about the life of Christ and the kingdom of God according to the gospel. Here we realized that my dream was of Jesus. He is calling us to give us salvation and to give us rest, to give us life. I asked what danger she faces back in Iran. If people knew about my faith, I would be rejected. This is the type of social persecution. If the government knew about my faith, I would be executed or hung in the street at once. Claire came to faith through scripture and a friend. When I was reading the Bible, I couldn't ask others to explain the passage. When I went to university, I met an Armenian girl. I asked her so many questions. How did they live? How did they worship? Many things like that about the Christian life. Her answers brought me to make my own decision. It changed her life. Christ brought me many blessings. I can't describe how faithful Jesus has been, but things which I cannot say in words have happened to me. Whenever I am praying and I'm lifting up my spirit towards God, I do believe and I feel the hand of God touching my heart and shaking my heart. This man, we'll call Dennis, also had a dream. In the dream, I still remember some marks on his face and that he was wearing a crown, a king's crown, on his head. A strong brightness came out of each part of his body and many people were bowing down before him. That dream is still alive in me and it's with me every day. I remember feeling like I saw heaven. He showed me many different things since I believed in Jesus, but that dream became a turning point in my life. I asked him if others are coming to Jesus inside Iran. Yes, many people are coming to Christ through dreams. You can't imagine how Jesus is appearing to people. I feel like everybody's looking for a home, looking for the truth. What the Iranian people are going through right now is very difficult. The only one who can change that situation is Christ himself. So please pray and ask others to pray for the people of Iran to experience the power of the resurrection. Iran's mullahs try to quench Christianity in their Islamic Republic. Despite those efforts, missionaries say Iran has one of the fastest growing churches in the world. While politics and extremists rearrange the Middle East, Fabian and others say the Holy Spirit is working at a much higher level to change lives. The harvest is very ripe and people are desperate. They, are, they have lost everything, they are in pain, they need help and they are ready to listen and people need to know that. Yes, there's many bad people and they want to kill and destroy, but there's so much more people who are desperate for answers in life. And we as the light and salt, we need to be here for such a time as this, to be His voice and be His hand and bring the gospel of the kingdom to their lives. Chris As I started investigating, I truly did believe that the context was all defensive battles in the Quran. But the more I investigated, the more I realized that was simply not the case. Chapter 9, verse 5, 
Okay, so chapter 9 is the most violent chapter of the Quran. It's Surah at tawbah And this is the very same chapter which says, fight the Jews and Christians until they pay the jizya and feel humiliated. Just chapter 9, verse 29. This is the same chapter in uh, chapter 9, verse 111. And I think this is one of the scariest verses of the Quran. Chapter 9, verse 111 says, The reason Allah has bought your person and your property is this, so you may slay in battle and be slain. In other words, you're a Muslim, so you can kill and die in battle. And so I had to contextualize that. Somehow I had to say, this cannot be what Muslims are told to do. But as I studied the history of early Islam, I found out that actually chapter 9 of the Quran is the last major chapter to have been revealed. In other words, right before Muhammad dies, it's as if he calls people to his deathbed and says, I've got some more instructions to give you. That's just a metaphorical language I'm using, but it's like this is the last message I want to leave with you. Chapter 9 of the Quran. The most violent one there is. When we consider the Bible, people will say, well, what, what ISIS is doing, didn't Obama say something like this recently? What ISIS is doing is no better or no worse than the Crusades. It's no better or no worse than what happened in Christian history.